Hello everybody, this is David, again with another Verilog video um, on the Basis 3 FPGA. This time I'm going to be creating a voting machine, my version of a voting machine. So what's going to be involved on the Basis 3 is all 16 LEDs, um, or all 16 switches, all 16 LEDs, um, actually just three of the four seven segment displays, this far left one and then these two, this one will always be turned off. And then all five buttons. So the way I think of a voting machine is I think about security. So you might have a poll official or somebody run the voting. And so in the in it'll when you turn it on, it'll be in an idle state. And then in, in order to open the voting machine, you need to put in a code on these switches and then hit this button right here to go into open the voting. And then you'll see these LEDs flash, letting you know that voting is open and you'll see the uh, vote count over here. And so these three buttons here represent voting for your candidate. So there's candidate one, two, and three. This one up here is a reset. So you go through your voting and then whenever the voting's done, the poll official will put his switches back on to his code, hit this button again to close the voting and then uh, three seconds later you'll see the vote count and then the number of the candidate who won either one two or three and uh, I'll show you the code it's there's a lot of code involved and then I'll show you it working so let's get through this all right here I am in Vivado here is um, looking at the module hierarchy I didn't do a block diagram but you can see I have a top for the voting machine a 1 hertz generator, a 2 hertz generator, I instantiate 5 button debounce for the 5 buttons, a binary to BCD converter from state machine to 7 segment control, an LED driver, a state machine, and the 7 segment control. So going through each of the modules, we'll start with the 1 hertz generator, same one I've used all uh, before. We have the 100 megahertz coming in. We have a counter that goes to half of that, resets to zero, toggles an output that is the 1 hertz. Here's a 2 hertz generator. We just need to go to half of the previous 1 hertz value, and this is pretty much the same with that. And then in effect, we have a 2 hertz signal. Here's the button to bouncer with the clock. It'll be the 100 megahertz button in, button out. Um, the button signal has to propagate through um, three registers in order to be debounced. And then the last register is the button out. The LED driver is for the blinking lights. The blink, all 16 LEDs will blink back and forth with a two hertz signal when voting is open and that's what this enable signal is for voting open so i have a parameter for to set the leds to 01010101 all the way through and this is 10101010 all the way through um, here's a counter register i'm just going to keep counting it from zero to one on this and that way i can switch between these led sets right here so if counter is zero it'll display this if counter is one it'll display this and that's only at the enable signal. If there is not an enable signal, then I will just set the LEDs to this, which will be the far left LED and the far right LED in the row of 16. Here's the state machine. We're gonna bring, we're gonna use the one hertz clock for this. Slow it down a bit. Um, that way the buttons, you don't accidentally hit a button and register more than one vote. So we'll slow the clock down. For that, I have the three buttons coming in for the candidates, the bottom button that is open voting or closed voting by the official, and then the top button for the reset. We have the 16 switches. Um, we have a register called the winner, so that's how we know if candidate one, two, or three is the winner. Um, enable the LEDs, which enables the LED driver when it's in that um, open voting state, and then we'll have our total vote count and then the state which goes to the seven segment control here's a register for the vote counter uh, voting closed counter register okay this is just that three bit register or two bit register for counting up to three um, you'll see it in the, when it goes from into a state so i create four registers for the vote so if the total votes right now the most votes we can have is 15 because i have a four bit register and so 
one candidate can receive all 15 votes so we need or any candidate can so we need all the same four bit registers including the total votes now here's the code right here for the switches if the switches equal this admin code which is the two on the end and the two in the middle um, seven and eight so zero seven eight and fifteen then we're able to enter into the open uh, voting open mode or state here are the state parameters right here idle voting open voting close and display win here's the state register to keep track of the states here's the state logic if we reset it we'll go to idle in the case of the state reg if we're in idle and we receive that button that bottom button to open or close the voting if the switches are equal to the admin code like i said right here if the switches are in the right positions then we will go into the voting open state and then once we're in here if we have the switches in that code again and we receive that button we'll close the voting so while we're in voting open other stuff's going to happen you can hit the buttons and then the counters will count up and i'll show you that down here in those logics um, the next state is voting close once it's closed We'll have that counter, that two-bit counter you saw up there. It'll count up. There'll be logic for that down here. When it gets to three, we'll go to the display win state. And this is the state where we'll display which candidate won and the total amount of votes. Here's the total votes register. So always at the positive clock or reset. If reset, we'll reset the total votes. And then if we receive a button one or button two or button three, then we will just increment the total votes. And then here's a control for each candidate register. Um, each one corresponds to its button. If it's reset, it'll go to zero. So for candidate one, button one will increment it. Candidate two, button two will increment that. And then button three will increment candidate three's total votes. Now, vote counter, here's that, that little two-bit counter. If it's reset, we'll just go to zero. And then if we're in the voting close state, then it'll count. And if you remember in the in the voting close state, when that counter gets to three, then the next state will go to display win. And at the same time that happens, that counter will go back to zero. It's no longer in the voting close state, so it will no longer count. And it'll be ready to do it again the next time. Now, um, winner register control logic. Okay, so that winner, so we're going to either have four cases. We're going to have candidate one winning, candidate two winning, candidate three winning, or nobody winning, which means there was a tie and there needs to be a revote. So that's this logic right here. So basically at the clock, if it's reset, we'll go to zero. We'll set the winner. Otherwise, here's the logic for it. So candidate one votes is greater than candidate two and candidate one votes greater than candidate three and that means the winner is candidate one and we'll just have binary one same case down here for candidate two being greater than both of the other ones we'll have binary two candidate three being greater than the other two binary three and then nobody will be binary zero here excuse me we assign the outputs here vote count is the total votes and that goes to the seven segment control enable leds right here only when voting is open so we can have the led driver blink the leds and then the state from the, is assigned the state reg that also goes to seven segment control so now the vote count actually needs to go into a binary to bcd converter it comes into here and we end up splitting it in, into its bind in its tens and its ones and its BCD value in here. And then from there that gets pushed onto the seven segment control in these two values here, the VC tens and VC ones. Since we only have 15 total votes, we're only gonna ha ever have to display a zero or a one. And if it's a zero, I'm not gonna display it. I turn it off down in the, the cases for the segments and you'll see that. But here's a seven segment control. We have 100 megahertz clock reset, the state coming in from the state machine. These two coming in from the BCD converter. Also the winner coming in from the state machine and the outputs are the segments and the anodes. Parameters for all of the um, values, um, including null, turning them all off and then zero to nine. Here's the control for, to control switching the anodes. Um, same one I've used before, it works pretty well. So I just copied this in here and, and keep using it. Um, basically there's a anode select which will select each anode in term based on the value of this timer it counts to 100k 
and then increments the anode select and it'll just inc keep incrementing that two bit value and since there's four possible values we can cycle through four possible anodes we turn this one on this one on this one on this one on and it just keeps going it creates the fact that they're all on at the same time to the human eye so in the idle state we'll have nothing on the segments and the voting open state we will have nothing on the first two segments and then we only have 15 votes so we're going to have the vote count in tens in the first one if it's zero i'll null it out and then if it's one it's one and then in the case of the ones position, we could either have zero through nine for the vote count. Uh, and now when the voting is closed, we'll have the same output here. And then for three seconds, it'll go to display winner. And then in the first anode, we'll display the value of the winner. So based on the winner, whatever that binary value is, zero is a tie, um, candidate one, candidate two, candidate three is the winner. That's it. Here's the top module instantiating all. There's 11 different modules down here. Well, not different, 11 total modules. There's five of these debouncers right here. But then there's just a bunch of wires connecting them all up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just all the wires that are being driven out. There's no other logic or assigning of anything in here. The top. Uh, matches the here's the constraints file all our inputs and outputs in the top match the names of what we want to do here we're going to bring in a lot from the board we're going to bring in the clock all 16 switches all 16 leds seven of the segments delete the decimal point part um, all four anodes and then all five buttons and make sure to name the buttons we want this is button l button c button r button U and button D to match all of our inputs in here. I've already ran the synthesis implementation generated the bitstream. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my board and program it and then I'll show you it working. Okay back on the basis three. Um, can't it's hard to see but you have the two leds that's the eight and the zero and or the one in the hex 8001 just showing you that it's on now you can't really you can't do anything you can only reset it but it's back where it's going to start anyway until you put in the code so it's these two switches on the outside these two switches on the inside uh, in the middle here so the official would do that and then open the voting by pressing this button you'll see them blink the leds blink and then we have a total vote count of zero so then before letting anybody vote or see the board the official turns off his key code and now turns over the the board to voting and so now people come in and we'll, we'll vote for a couple different candidates there i put one vote for each one and now I'll just, I'll have candidate one win by giving him another vote. Then when the voting's done, the official gets the board, puts their key code in again, presses this button to close the voting. We have the vote count there. And then three seconds later, you see the one show up here saying that candidate, candidate one won. So now we'll reset it. Um, I'll put the key code in again, just show you one more operation. Voting is open. Hide my key code. Let's just put in a vote for candidate one for each, right? And then we'll close the voting just to see how a tie would work. So there the voting is closed and we'll see zero over here, meaning that nobody won that there was a tie. So there you have it, a voting machine state machine on the basis three FPGA. Thanks for watching.